I feel I should apologize. It's a British tradition that whoever is closest to the venue is the last one to arrive. <laughs> so I apologize for arriving late. And secondly, uh, having listened to your presentations, I must apologize for the quality of my English compared to yours. If you have any difficulty understanding me, I'd be more than happy to repeat. So I am a geriatrician. My name is Graham Ellis. I'm a geriatrician, and I work in a hospital at home program, which is 10 to 15 minutes drive to the east of here. And we have set up in collaboration with our health and social care partnerships and have been running since 2011. And our focus is primarily on older people with or without frailty, but with complex comorbidities. So we haven't selected a single organ condition group. And just to illustrate our pathway, in, uh, in our setting, if a patient is unwell, they will usually phone their own GP. That would be normal. And in Lanarkshire, the GP who feels that a patient requires admission to hospital will phone a call centre, a bit like the ones you've seen, who will then facilitate an ambulance arrival and transfer the patient to hospital. And they will alert the hospital the patient is on their way. And ordinarily, looking at the top pathway, that means the patient is admitted to the hospital and has routine investigations done, has some treatment initiated, but in our experience, and I guess this is the concern, all too often that results in too many people ar arriving or needing institutional care after a period of prolonged hospital care. So that, amongst many other factors, is a big driver for us trying to pursue an alternative pathway. So in our hospital at home model, the GP will see the patient come to the same conclusion that hospital level care is required. The call center will divert that call to our services, where we will arrive within the patient's house within an hour and start with simple laboratory tests, bedside monitoring, uh, and then patients will be seen by a nurse practitioner or a therapy practitioner who will do the role that a junior doctor used to do. And then they will be seen by myself or one of my colleagues, and we will agree a plan of care for that patient in their house with them or with their family. That might include hospital diagnostics, but we're far more targeted and more careful about what we feel patients need. It may involve rehabilitation, but the aim at all times is to keep the patient in their own home setting where possible. And since we started in 2011, we've taken just over 16,000 patients just till the end of, of October last month. So that's about the size of a, a moderately sized district general hospital that they would take in a year. So that's uh, it's our eighth birthday next month. So we've been running uh, for eight years and started as one hub, but have moved to having three hubs to cover the area just for geographical reasons. And last year, just as an example, we took just under 3,000 admissions to our service. Uh, or 3,000 referrals. Now, we will manage just under 80% of those patients in their own home. And as I illustrated, because they come direct from the GP or in some cases the ambulance service, there are some patients where we will not feel comfortable managing them in their home and we will choose to admit them to hospital. We have roughly 64 virtual beds. It's one way of describing the size of our service. And uh, we will have an average length of stay of somewhere between four and six days. So this is for acute episodes of care. And we currently cover a population of approximately half a million. And we've done some work looking at the costs of our service, because this is a question I'm asked about a lot. And approximately uh, comparing to our acute hospital beds, the, the cost of hospital at home is roughly half the cost for a hospital bed day of an acute hospital stay. However, we've done some further research with Oxford University looking at following up for six months after an episode of admission, because it is perfectly possible that we've avoided an acute cost but just pushed cost up the system. And essentially, for our service, there's still a cost saving of nearly 20% at up to six months after admission. That doesn't include the cost of an ambulance trip to hospital and from hospital. These are quite expensive, very technical, high-skilled staff. So that's a further cost saving of £265 for every admission. And our average costs of prescriptions are actually very low in the hospital at home service. So they're the cost of two large lattes and a muffin from Starbucks. 
Bearing in mind that Scottish coffee costs more than yours, I'm afraid. And if we compare to other setups for hospital, uh, if I just illustrate from one of our larger district general hospitals, the top uh, line there is for the emergency care unit. This is a medical admissions unit in Wishaw General Hospital. That covers 36 beds with approximately 58 whole time equivalent staff. If you include everyone from the porter, the cleaner, the administrator, the, the doctors and the junior doctors and the nurses and so on. Uh, the bottom line is the 25 uh, bedded geriatric wa admission ward and that's covered by 32 hold time equivalent staff using the same formula. Hospital at home is in the middle with 64 beds covered by only 38 hold time equivalent staff. So we are quite small uh, and quite cost light. And for us, the key issue if you like for our service has been our workforce, recruiting the right staff with the right values and holding on to them because they've become very popular property, training them and introducing elements of role blurring. So workforce has been our major focus and in fact when we started we were very technology light. We started with a mobile phone, a car and a piece of paper and technology has been a late addition to our service but our priority has been, as someone has already, already illustrated, people first and systems second. We've done some qualitative evaluation with uh, a local uh, university in our area and, is, and has been referenced already. Hospital at home is enormously popular with patients and patients' care. And we've been doing other research and one that uh, I'm excited about but just to highlight because it should be published fairly soon is a large randomized controlled trial of over a thousand patients which is going to be published later this year across 10 UK centres. Cost me the best years of my life, so please do look out for that. Um, and of course the key question is around safety, uh, effectiveness, experience and cost. And I want to just talk a little bit about some of the areas that we're trying to innovate just to, to try and uh, tune in with what you're discussing already. Video calling I can cover very quickly. We've been given smartphones and these are equipped with video calling and we've tended to use that for occasional situations where I am talking to a nurse and I want something like a visualization of the patient, of the rash, of the skin, or of their general sense of distress. And that extra visual information helps with clinical decision making. So that's something we already possess on smartphones and we're going to try and make more of. I want to touch on remote monitoring just uh, in a similar way to what you've got going on and then talk on some of the other areas that we're trying to develop. In our case, we're trying to test out remote monitoring with current health. I've brought some of the equipment if people want to see. Very, very similar to what you're describing. It is a wearable uh, worn on the uh, upper arm just like that. Most of our patients do not look as glamorous as the model in the top left. They mo look more like our first patient Jean, who's extremely frail in a nursing home. And the, the device itself measures pulse, oxygen saturations, respiratory rate, temperature, and movement, but links to paired devices for blood pressure, weight, and spirometry, which you've described. Uh, the other element of the device, which we hope to explore soon, is video calling with a tablet that's connected to these devices. And each of these elements of data is then coalesced into creating a new score. Um, this is National Early Warning Score. This is our system for looking at physiological stability or instability in the UK context. And it creates a dashboard so that you can look at your patient data and interact with that. And I want to illustrate with a real case. And essentially, I've had to remove the names. I debated whether to show you the live feed on our patients, but for Confidentiality reasons, I can't do that. So apologies for static pictures. But this is a lady that one of my colleagues, junior doctors, saw on Friday. Eight-year-old lady who's mildly frail, but had clinical signs of pneumonia with consolidation. She uh, was initially quite hypotensive. I don't know if you can see that. Her initial systolic blood pressure was 92, and her respiratory rate was in the high 30s. Um, so we started treatment with her, but essentially I have been watching over the weekend, just slightly anxious about her condition. And uh, the way that the data comes in is it's available on a tablet or a desktop, 
and this is just taken from my phone, so you can see she's the second patient on that list. But reassuringly for me, uh, and I can interact with the menus and go through each of the physiological parameters, and I could see that her respiratory rate was starting to come down, her oxygen levels were starting to come up, and her blood pressure stabilized fairly rapidly. So I was reassured that she was making the correct <laughs> clinical progress. Um, and one of our reasons for looking at remote monitoring is, a lot of it's very similar to you, but one of the key questions is for us, can it create additional time? Uh, so one of our challenges in our healthcare system is that staff are not as readily available as they used to be. And to create capacity, we need to take tasks and see if we can create capacity for nurses. So we want to try and replace routine nursing tasks, these blood pressure, pulse, and temperature monitoring were all done by hand by nurses visiting the house. So we want to create capacity. And then we want to look at, can it create additional safety? Now this isn't, uh, you might think that's odd being second, but our, we would always address safety first and we'd only ever keep someone at home if we felt it was safe. But we're looking at how can it create additional safety for patients. So we've been doing a pilot of this and we are starting to monitor some data. This is very early data. so. Numbers are not large here, but a month in, we're finding that on average it's saving about 60 minutes or an hour of time for each patient that we have. It's saving us about 20 miles of traveling time, which, which is more than just travel, it's cost saving. And we're finding a bit like the case I illustrated, that there are patients who we can monitor and feel safer about because we have that immediate oversight of them. And surprisingly, but interestingly, we found a lot of feedback from patients and families who are reassured, who have greater confidence because we're monitoring them with the device. So that's been a, a nice additional benefit. Um, just very briefly, we're also wanting to explore point of care blood testing. I fully accept you may be well ahead of us on this. Uh, the challenge for us is our laboratories and the hospital are very cheap and very efficient. So whatever we do has to be better than that. We want to see if it can improve our safety by detection <coughs> of early acute kidney injury or sepsis. And again, if it will create time, if it will free up time for nurses to see another patient. Uh, one other area that I'm excited about and my colleagues think I'm mad is point of care ultrasound. I've used some research money to buy a device. I don't yet know how to work it. All I can tell you is my wife does not have gallstones. Um, I haven't tried it on the dog, but it works really well. Um, and we are going to use this in a research protocol, but essentially we're also keen to explore whether, in fact, bringing diagnostics into the home is possible with portable technology. It is uh, pr practically to scale on the photograph. It's not much larger than a phone and works wirelessly. So the technology is really very good, but the training and the logistics of the staff is the key element. Finally, I just want to finish on some brief notes from us uh, around our learning around digital technology, e-health, and some of these developments. Um, obviously, one of our main challenges is around resource. So uh, if we had all the money in the world, we would probably have invested more. But I'm kind of glad that we worked on our people processes first. The second thing is I think that a design mentality is key. You've got to work out what you're doing it for and in what context. We've been offered devices off the shelf and found that they really don't work for our context. So you've got to work from where uh, people are at. I am now quite old and I'm a bit of a dinosaur with technology. My computer doesn't recognize my printer. So whatever we do has to be intuitive. It has to work around people and not the other way around. So we can't constantly be fixing our devices. For our work context in Scotland, we have a large number of different platforms, each requiring a separate password and login. I have about 30. I'm too old to remember that, so I write it down, and that's not safe. So whatever we can do to make things more intuitive, more quick, uh, and better would be good. And I think the other thing that I would say is that I think we need to work towards having, uh, I've called tomorrow's methods in play, but actually it's today's methods. We still talk about laptops, but actually I think we need to be working more and more for a staff perspective to things like mobile phones, something that's more like Facebook than Word, and something that's much more intuitive because our population are moving on in terms of their learning of technology and we can't work with yesterday's kit. So that's all I had to say. Thank you very much. <laughs>